Look, I'm not convinced there's a more fun or better ghost type in the game than Chandelure. This thing is sick. It's finally back with the DLC, so you already know we gotta get this thing going. Today we've got ourselves a crazy match, and if you're into that type of thing, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It would really help out the channel, and I do appreciate the support. And most of all, I'm gonna need some support against this team I am playing. It is full of absolute threats, and it looks extremely scary. This team is not playing games, so it turns out to be a wild match. Let's get into it. So let me first of all start by saying, the Pokemon I'm least happy to see come back is has got to be Clefable. This thing is an absolute... Nightmare to deal with as always. This thing has always been extremely good, and they're gonna lead off with it here. Uh, I really wish this thing was still back in the limbo of not being in the game, but it's here and we gotta deal with it. So, I actually lead off with a pretty good lead for this. However, I know that they actually do have the perfect counter for a sludge wave in the form of one very large bronze hammer, and that turns out to be the Tinkaton. So, I'm gonna expect that switch into this Tinkaton, and then rather going for the attack against the Clefable, I go for the trick, and I then give this thing a pair of choice specs. So first of all, this thing looks like an idiot in its new glasses, and now that does limit the basically capability that this thing can do. Uh, essentially now this thing is locked into a single move, and that is really good for me, because it gets no benefit from having boosted special damage. Uh, and now Roger's kind of free to click around and switch his moves up if need be. But I obviously have nothing I can do to it, so I decide to switch into the uh, Alolan Golem, who comes in expecting a Stealth Rock, potentially trying to preserve my Sturdy, but they go for the knockoff, get rid of my Custat Berry, and that's kind of this dude's whole thing. So, you know, without my berry, my diet, do without my drink, my diet doctor kelp, I'm not shit. So I can't do nothing here really other than go for uh, the stealth rock. I do want to get those hazards up because it is going to be, uh, I feel like, pretty helpful in this matchup. So they decide to bring back in the Clefable. And honestly, I'm thinking, hey, this is kind of fine. This thing can try to potentially start to set up calm mines in my face, but uh, I should be able to kind of outlast it and explode before it can do too much. So... Uh, it's going to go for the Moon Blast there. I'm able to take another one, which is amazing, because my plan is essentially go for the Rock Slide, get as much chip as possible, uh, and then just kind of go boom. That's that's kind of what this Golem does. Shout out to Donut. It really just takes one for the team out here. Got to be an exhausting existence, being the, the guy that just comes in and just offs himself every time. But I am able to live that next Moon Blast and then fire off that explosion, which is going to be enough to take care of the Clefable. And honestly, the best kind of Clefable is a dead Clefable, so we love to see that thing down. Uh, and I'm totally willing to trade a Lolan Golem for that uh, Clefable, especially because I already got my Stealth Rock up, so this thing kind of did what it needed to do, and it, he, Homeboy didn't even need to eat his berry, so uh, that's pretty solid. But now we have an empty battlefield, which is always an interesting situation, and full of opportunity. So what I decided to do is go into Torterra, and I'm thinking Torterra has a really good uh, shot to kind of get a sweep here, as they decide to bring in the Politoed. Uh, again, we're working against a rain team here. Of course, Politoed being back with that drizzle bubblegum ass is going to uh, make it really nice for uh, some of their Pokemon in the back. But my plan is this. Essentially predict them to go for an Ice Beam, and I go for the Terra Fire. Uh, so rather than being four times weak to the Ice, I get that Terra Fire up. I'm able to then Shell Smash, uh, and then I'm in a position where I'm faster. I have a ton of attack, and I can easily knock this thing out. And a lot of their team with a Bullet Seed. Uh, and Rock Blast combo. So I go for that Shell Smash, I do put the old Fire Hazard on top of my tree, the Chandelier is there, and there has never been a turtle that is more ready to fight than this Grastoise right here. So I get that attack boost, the speed boost, um, and as it's gonna turn out here, after this, after all is said and done, the Politoed's gonna go for the Encore. He says, hey, I really like how you just broke your shell there, go ahead and do it again. So now I'm locked into Shell Smash, and that is not good, so of course I have to get my ass out of here. I was essentially wasted my Terra. I've lost my element of surprise, and now my turtle just looks like an idiot. So I have to get out of there, of course, and I decide to bring in Mo. Now Mo is, you know, pretty familiar with switching into special attackers and then getting my health back with a drain punch. And honestly, just getting rid of this Politoed could be really nice for me because uh, this thing is just a menace. He decides he's going to go ahead and get himself a bull cut, goes, goes for that Terra ground, straight up puts the earth on its head, neck game must go crazy, and he does go for that earth power here. So... Uh, Kong Keller is going to be able to take this Earth Power, but it's not looking great after a critical hit. So that does activate my, my Burn Orb as well. That's always why it's really nice to hard switch into Kong Keller early, because I can get that Burn Orb uh, and just fire off a Guts attack immediately. So I'm going to go for the Drain Punch here, as they're actually going to end up switching out uh, the, 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 bu the Bubblegum Frog. And they decide to go into Great Tusk. So again, there's so many threats on this team, Great Tusk being one of them. Uh, drain Punch does, you know, like nothing, because... 
This thing is impossible to kill. Have you seen the size of these horns? The HP is all sitting within those, in those tusks. I guess not horns. They save shit. But, uh, you know, Conkelder's kind of at the point where it's like, do I save this thing? I'm honestly thinking I can go for a prediction here and get Chandelure positioned pretty well. And that is basically expecting this thing to go for a rapid spin, getting rid of those hazards. I can bring in my ghost type instead and the rapid spin will not work and then Chandelure is in a great spot. So. In comes the shiny spooky boy, does go for that rapid spin there, so goes right through me. I say, no, 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 you're, those stealth rock you got over there, you're dealing with that, that is, that is, that is your consequence. So, uh, now I am I am a choice scarf chandelure, so this is actually a pretty large win condition for me in this match, in that it's able to outspeed stuff like the uh, walking wake. So, I'm going to go for the earth, or the energy ball, just expecting potentially maybe the uh, the great tusk stays in, but instead they're just going to go into Tinkaton, who... You know, takes an energy ball pretty nicely, but I give him a little spin of root. Just kind of flex on the flex on him with my cool little cool little spin animation. But uh, I am gonna save the chandelier for later because this thing is extremely useful here. Uh, I just have a little bit of work to do to put this thing in a spot where you can kind of clean up a game for me. And so it's a pretty big mountain to climb, but I'm ready for it. So what I'm gonna do is switch into Empoleon, and they actually end up going for the Gigaton Hammer. Now you may remember this thing does actually have choice spec, so it's actually locked into that attack which you're actually not allowed to use twice in a row. So it actually stays in and goes for that Gigaton Hammer, which forces it to struggle, uh, which then gives it some recoil, as uh, I actually ended up going for the Ice Beam. I, I thought for sure there was no way they were going to stay in here, and it kind of seemed like Walking Wake was a relatively simple switch there, but now I'm actually going to end up going for that Agility, as uh, they decide, you know, even if I stay in and go for that Gigaton Hammer, it's not going to be super great, as now they decide to bring in Walking Wake. So. We got little baby arms out here, and honestly, Walking Wake is another Pokemon that is the bane of my existence. Uh, it is going to activate that booster energy, which does give it a speed boost. However, Empoleon's going to go for that agility, so I got myself some speed as well, and I didn't even have to call that call that shit unboostered. I didn't even have to, didn't even have to get it artifi artificially, just naturally fast out here, baby. Um, but he's actually <laughs> still faster. It goes for that flip turn, uh, which is another a new move that Walking Wake gets access to. Water-type U-turn goes honestly kind of crazy, um, and now they decide to go back into the Tinkaton, uh, who does take an Ice Beam here. So this thing comes in, it takes the Stealth Rock damage, and I have not really been managing HP on this thing super great. As I go for that Ice Beam there, and uh, I get a critical hit. So that's not going to be able to look like the next Ice Beam kills. It's like, it probably does kill. I decide to go for the Hydro Pump, I risk it, it actually misses. I definitely should have just clicked Ice Beam there, um, but again, like I said, I wasn't looking exactly at that HP, and I was like, maybe it's a roll for another Ice Beam. I decided to go for the Hydro Pump, it didn't really work out for me, uh, as now the Tinkaton does end up going for the knockoff, gets rid of my Life Orb, which potentially saves this Empoleon a little bit, and that now uh, I, I don't have to take recoil every time I attack, which is kind of nice. So, uh, the Walking Weight comes back in, and we saw that it was faster last time, so I decide I'm going to go for another Agility here, get myself faster. Uh, and be able to fire off an Ice Beam on it. I probably, it's kind of a lost cause because Ice Beam isn't going to be enough to knock this thing out. I do go for it there. It knocks it to a range where I do feel comfortable uh, that my Chandelure can handle it later though. So that's kind of all Empoleon's goal was here. It was basically to whittle down Wake to where Choice Scarf Chandelure can, uh, can pick that thing off later on. It's all about the chip damage, ladies and gentlemen. I swear to God, it is so important. Uh, you, you cannot underestimate that shit. But... Uh, in comes the Chandelure. So, here's the plan. I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball. Their switch into this thing, their answer has been that Tinkaton. Uh, but again, this thing has taken so much damage that it's, uh, it's not really going to be much of an answer anymore. And this thing has just been crippled with crazy eyesight having this Choice Specs <laughs> attached uh, the entire game anyway. But uh, it does come in, does break the mold a bit, but I just throw my balls with this thing's hammer. Pause. And uh, that is going to finish off the Tinkaton. So, that is pretty damn solid. Chandelure grabs himself a kill, and uh, we're actually sitting in here pretty damn nice, not having to worry about switching into uh, the Stealth Rock, which is solid. So, uh, I am Choice Scarfed into that Shadow Ball. It is Stab. Unfortunately, it's not going to be quite enough damage to be able to knock out the Politoed at full here. And again, it's kind. Of, this is kind of the only thing I use to beat the, uh, the Walking Wake. So, here's the plan. I do want to conserve the Chandelure here, and I basically switch into Conkeldur uh, as a kind of a sack here. It does hurt to do, because knowing that I could potentially save this thing for a Mach Punch later uh, would be nice, but the other Pokemon I have just seem a little bit more valuable at this point in the match. So, I come in on a Surf and I do die, which is unfortunate. However, now I get a free switch into whatever I would like, and Monkey Dory actually looks really strong here. They don't have a whole lot that wants to hard switch into this thing, 
Um, especially now that I can change my moves. I'm just basically going to bring this thing in, go for a Psychic, even if I'm not able to knock this thing out. Um, it should be... It should be in range to later pick off. So I go for the psych. The reason why I don't go for the grass knot is just because I think this thing actually it, it, pretty equivalent damage. It goes based off of weight. So I do actually get my toxic chain ability, which is pretty sweet. I get the uh, get the basically special attack and poison touch, which goes crazy. And they fire off an earth power, which I completely expected to die at, but I somehow live with 19. This thing got a stab earth power at me, um, and Monkey says that's fine. It, it hurt me a bit, but I'm over here. Still chilling with my little upside down heart on my ass. So, um, I'm essentially just going to go ahead and finish this thing off with another Psychic. I can't really expect to switch uh, or go for anything too crazy here. Because the game is getting honestly pretty close at this point. Uh, and the threats that they have are especially, especially scary. Like, Walking Wake, they have the super fast um, Kilowattril in the back. And uh, it's, it's, it's wild. So... Politoed does go down. What that means is now they can no longer get the rain back up again. So the rain they got, they're going to have to stick with. It's it's feeling pretty damp out here, but uh, I'm feeling like I'm in a decent spot. Until Kilowattro comes in, and then I'm thinking, oh shit. This thing basically just gets extremely fast Hurricane. Uh, it's faster than everything except for Chandelure. So you know I can't switch into Chandelure here. Um, I'm trying to decide if the monkey is worth keeping around. I do decide to conserve the monkey, and I go into Torterra. Basically just knowing that... You know, there's not really a chance to be able to keep this thing around and provide value, so I decide to essentially just sack this thing off, uh, and the plan is just to get Chandelier back in. So I actually am able to live a hurricane because uh, Grastoise is amazing. Um, you know, however, it just fires off one more, and uh, that is going to take care of Torterra. So Kilowatt Roll over here flying a little extra high today, but. It's really going to come down to a matchup against my Chandelier, and if I can take that thing out. Because I know I'm going to be faster with my Choice Scarf, um, and it all kind of comes down to... Pretty much comes down to this. So Chandelier is going to come in here. I'm still safe of the Stealth Rock. I'm looking amazing and shiny, uh, and I do... Basically, I think with that Stealth Rock damage, a Shadow Ball should be enough to knock this thing out. I decide to go for it, and as it turns out, uh, the Shadow Ball is going to be able to knock out the Kilowattril, which is absolutely insane. That is a very scary Pokemon, and now I've kind of positioned myself to the point where I have the answers to win this, is just to see if I can make it happen. So, they decide to bring in the Great Tusk. This thing is a little bit weakened at this point. I can't really risk switching in Monkey Dory. If he goes for the Earthquake, uh, I basically die, and then I'm just kind of stuck with the Chandelure. So what I do is, go for that Shadow Ball, and I expect it potentially to kill it. It actually lives it with like 10 HP. And he decides to go for the Stealth Rock, which is a very interesting move. That is mostly just because he figures Monkey Door can't switch in, but uh, me basically staying in with the Chandelure and just going for that Shadow Ball is going to pay off. It takes care of the Great Tusk, and now the last Pokemon on their side is going to be that Walking Wake. So that Stealth Rock play honestly put me in a great spot, but it could have gone a couple of different ways, right? Because if this is a Walking Wake that's actually not timid in max speed, Monkey Dory outsped it uh, and does finish it off with the Psychic, so... Uh, me to stay in, go for the Shadow Ball once again. If it is not broke, don't fix it. Chandelier is going to kind of come in the clutch here and finish off the game. Walking Wake, like the scariest Mon ever. And uh, we are able to come through with the win on that one. So that was a really close game. It really could have gone, you know, either way with that end game. But I had a whole lot of fun with it. We are back in the swing of things. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.